Well, let me go across to our managing editor, Navika Kumar, who will take over and uh, have a live conversation with the Defence Minister. Over to you, Navika. Thank you, Swati. Uh, thank you for uh, uh, getting me in. And we have the big Rafal controversy that's raging in the country. And we have Raksha Mantri Nirmala Sitaraman just joining us. <laughs> Good evening, uh, Ms. Nirmala Sitaraman, uh, Raksha Mantri, for joining us on a day when your government and Prime Minister Narendra Modi have once again been targeted by Rahul Gandhi and the Congress Party on the Rafael deal. Ms. Nirmala Sitaraman, today there is a letter that has been exposed by Mr. Rahul Gandhi, a letter that appeared in a newspaper and uh, he said that that letter is uh, tantamount to the Prime Minister's office exerting pressure on the Ministry of Defence and spoiling the negotiations that the Ministry of Defence was doing with the French counterpart for the Rafael deal. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, uh, Ms. Nirmala Sita Raman? Ms. Nirmala Sita Raman, good evening and thank you for joining me on News Hour Direct. Hello. Today, once again, Rahul yes. Gandhi has targeted your government and Prime Minister Narendra Modi for misleading the country and the Prime Minister's office uh, interfering in the negotiations of the Rafael deal and uh, actually hampering the negotiations that the Ministry of Defence was doing. Was this undue interference, Ms. Nirmala Sitaraman, by the Prime Minister's office in the Rafael deal? Navika, thank you very much uh, for having me and I think uh, it's also very uh, important that you're holding Eko Ariji. Eko This discussion, um, I'd like to tell you that uh, based on a newspaper's report today, uh, the opposition party has raised this issue. To just make things very clear, the newspaper which published this has done a half baked job. If their intention was to get the truth out on, the, on this matter, I wished, driven by the fact that they are bringing out the truth, they should have actually put the entire paper which they seem to have obtained from wherever and not stalked and cherry picked at just revealing the first half of the paper and not the second half. After all, the note which they have so proudly boasted that we found the source-based information from a file noting here we go the defense secretary has mentioned it drawing the attention of the then Raksha Mantri. Simple logic would expect the reader to say all right what did the Raksha Mantri say? So if your investigative journalism has taken you that far to get that front page noting it was obvious that immediately after that defense secretary's the then defense secretary's noting What's the response of the minister, the then minister? If only you are really fair and committed to the ethics of the journalism that you profess, you should have also produced the reply of the then Raksha Mantri. By not doing that and by revealing half of the picture and sensationalizing it and the opposition party which is anyway on a fishing expedition trying to uh, call names of the Prime Minister and trying to say that there is something majorly wrong in this in spite of the Supreme Court, in spite of me answering, in spite of yes yesterday's uh, Honourable Prime Minister's uh, speech. Even they don't have the patience to go through what could have been the matter there. They carried on this uh, newspaper. So and try to this disrupt half the letter that was and uh, presented. To answer it, this half it. letter, uh, Miss Nirmala Sitaraman, that was presented do you think it had a deliberate motive 
Are you saying that? Well, I can't understand what else could explain it and before even uttering those words which you have uh, actually raised now, I can't see how a half a page of the page, it is not even the reverse side, you know, it is not even on the second page, it is the same page which they have sourced from wherever they have sourced, which they have selectively cropped the first half and the reference of that noting actually relates to drawing the attention of the then Raksha Mantri. An investigative journalist would at least then look at what the then Raksha Mantri said by not revealing it. Certainly, I think you or I or any reader would be on right ground to say, what is it? Why did they have to hide this? Why did they have to cherry pick? That is where the suspicion actually raises the question, who's Music are they dancing to? Nirmala Sita Raman, I would, I, would, I would like to come in here and say that are any, any reporter, part of any newspaper, any channel that does a story will be accused of probably playing the music of one side or the other. So let me be the devil's advocate. Let me, let me ask you from your own answer that you've just given, two questions arise. Question number one that somebody gave a cropped letter to this newspaper to put out which was then picked up by the Congress party. That could very well have been the case. So who in the government is actually wanting to give out cropped letters with a certain narrative to the outside world, Ms. Nirmala Sitaraman? Instead of blaming others, does your government need to look within? No, very well. Thank you for suggesting that. But as an investigative journalist, as an eminent newspaper, as an op opposition party which is keen, which has been in governance for more than 60 years or 50 years, wouldn't we want to ask that question which was obviously at the end of reading that little note which is written by the then Defence Secretary, which is obvious in your face. This was a note drawing the attention of the then Raksha Mantri. Wouldn't then you or I or a reader raise this question saying, what did after all the then Raksha Mantri say for this? Commented that on the fact that who within the government it. is wanting to leak this? for the paper? You haven't answered the question of who within the government is trying to all leak right, this. That's something which I'll take care of. I'll, I'll try to investigate. I'll try to find out. I will find that out, I will check that out, it is all right, if I can, I will do that. But, before you print it out, before you publish it, wouldn't it be the moral responsibility then? I thought there was a culture of, you know, sending emails and we do not respond. Then you would say, no, no, we tried approaching you, you have not answered. None of that was done. It's a cropped thing. Let's assume, I go with you, let us say, somebody from the government has re revealed it or something like that which you're suggesting. Who from the government? Very well, assume somebody from the government. I'm not saying that's right, but still. Wouldn't a senior journalist or wouldn't a newspaper of repute, at least before they print it out, check up as to what are they printing out? I don't mind. Today I can stand up in the parliament and answer or the government can always give a rejoinder, rebuttal, whatever. But what kind of a journalism is this then? And I am surprised a reputed paper which has gone through the befores the way it went through and of course succumbed to pressure at that time in spite of crying hoarse about freedom of expression now, succumbed to pressure at that time to suppress that investigative journalism and here a half-baked investigative journalism to serve whose agenda pray to serve the agenda of truth or serve the agenda of something else what's this well you're you're making and accusations the, but miss sita raman, who, who miss sita to raman i want Just to ask you you would want to ask the question i want to ask yes. you you've raised the question that if somebody was looking at the defense secretary's noting why were they not looking at the raksha mantri's response Okay, now we have the full page and we have seen the Raksha Mantri's response.
But does the story end here, Ms. Nirmala Sitaraman? After the Raksha Mantri, yes. who has suggested here that this issue may be resolved uh, in consultation with the principal secretary to the PM. Was there anything else that came on file after this? Was there a resolution or did differences continue to persist between the Prime Minister's office and the Ministry of Defence? Navika, you may take a tooth comb and go through this whole process the extent to you to which you want or to which anybody would want but tell me in a, in a government in any government where collective responsibility is the thumb rule after all this the person who even earlier some people were pointing out saying there was a dissenting voice and all that signed the cabinet notes uh, details which were then taken the draft which was taken to the cabinet the defense secretary or the raksha mantri if they had difference of opinion would they all have had the cabinet note go through for discussion in the cabinet and in the cabinet any opportunity would have been lost is it before it got cleared it got cleared through the cabinet after due processes were followed in the ministry signature without the approval of the defense secretary or the raksha mantri the paper doesn't even go to the cabinet so what is the difference all of you all are searching for what is the difference that congress party is fishing for and what is driving this whole campaign even after the supreme court has given its verdict and even after me standing up and showing piece paper of after one another every piece of paper and quoting and reading out from them in 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 spite of all that, despite all that, you still would want to go with a tooth comb. You are very welcome. But then, let us also ask this question. What are the objections being raised? What are the mild posts which have been addressed? And where are we moving towards? This is a larger fishing expedition. Seeing are we started on this campaign. Let it, how can we retract now that these answers have been given? Let us keep bashing at it. And if luck would have it, I might get something more. You know, this kind of a fishing expedition is only going to harm the country. It's going to harm the motivation and the, uh, you know, the, the skill and the spirit of the Air Force. And end of the day, whose purpose or cause are we serving? Are you trying to say that something is driving the opposition? Some power is driving the opposition to uh, continue to charge you with Rafael? I think that is a question which all of us will have to ask the opposition party. The Prime Minister himself yesterday in the speech very clearly said what is happening? Point on point answers have been given. The Supreme Court has commented. We have disclosed everything that we need to disclose to the uh, CAG. After that too, the brazen language with which the opposition can glow, go about calling this country's Prime Minister a chore. Using today's newspaper, they have even um, cut, stuck and paste on the, pasted on the top saying uh, Prime Minister Modi is a chore. I mean, what is all this? Newspaper with the newspaper's name but at the top. Addition of uh, their own generous uh, attributes to the Prime Minister. What is all this? Is this done with the genuine interest of wanting to know the truth? Or is there something else which is driving them? Is a question media should be asking the opposition, not me. I'm on every time to answer, every time to give a coherent answer. I am not speaking uh, one one day and another another day like the figures which the opposition leader Sri Rahul Gandhi is going about blurting out everywhere. One number today, one num another number tomorrow. I'm not doing that. I'm giving you a narrative which is truth. And which is truth because it is only when you are speaking the truth that you can say inside or outside or anywhere the same thing. And we are doing that. So, Mr. Nirmala Sitaraman, before so I let you go, what is your message to Rahul Gandhi who persists with his allegations on Rafael deal and continues to call Chokidar Chorhe? What is your message to him? 
No, no. Um, I first of all want to very clearly put up my arms like this and say, I will answer any number of questions anytime, anywhere on Rafael. Because I strongly believe the decision on Rafael has been taken in national interest in making sure that the Indian Air Force does not have to, God forbid, in the eventuality have to have face to have to face a situation as and when it may arise. I don't know. I don't want a situation of that kind, but they should be combat ready. This decision has been taken in that national spirit, in that national interest point of view. So I'm not here to advise anybody, but I repeat this line. You can wake up a person who is genuinely sleeping, but you really can't wake up somebody who's pretending and who's pretending continues to pretend and in that enjoys himself. Well, on that note, thank you very much, Ms. Nirmala Sitaraman, for joining me on the big Rafael controversy, which refuses to go away. Thank you very much for joining me on News R Direct. Thank you.